This is the Gigabyte Z370N dash Wi-Fi. It is a ITX Wi-Fi enabled Z370 motherboard. Has quite a few interesting features and something that you might want to check out. So let's take a look. So of course, starting off with a tour of the motherboard. As I said, this is a Z370 uh, chipset. This is a uh, 1151 socket, so it will only support eighth generation Intel CPUs, and that's about it. It supports two DDR4 DIMM slots, also up to four SATA ports. You can also have your X16 reinforced PCIe slot in there for your graphics card or whatever else, but you actually have up to two M.2 slots as well. You have the front, front side one, which has a rather large heat sink, has a thermal pad on the bottom, and actually doubles as the chipset heat sink as well, so do bear that in mind as it will sort of somewhat share heat. And then you have the rear mounted M.2 slot as well, and these can actually be ran in RAID uh, 0 to 10 if you fancy. So as you can see, this board is littered with connectors. Starting at the top left, you have the 8 pin power connector and three four pin fan headers. These are nice as you often don't get many more than one or two on a lot of ITX boards. So it's nice to see three, but they're all right next to each other. So make sure that your fans can reach there. You also have obviously your 24 pin. Uh, down at the bottom left, you actually have the Realtek ALC 1220 codec as well, which is really nice to see as that's a pretty impressive codec. And especially for this size of board, you're gonna get some pretty nice audio from it. You have a USB 3.0 front panel header. None of the sort of fancy or newer type C enabled uh, ports or front panel headers available here, just the standard one. And you obviously do have USB 2 as well. In terms of rear IO, this is also pretty interesting. So you have a total of six USB 3 ports, a type C port, two gigabit ethernet and Wi-Fi, as well as your uh, sort of semi-standard uh, three audio outs as well. So again, very impressive. You also have a couple of display outputs if you want to use integrated graphics here, but especially considering you get three built-in networking devices for this ITX motherboard, that's pretty impressive. Now, speaking of the networking, both of those LAN ports or Ethernet ports are uh, both Intel uh, chipsets. I think one is an i1211 uh, uh, and the other one is still an Intel chip. It's just not the same. So bear that in mind, I do believe that you will still be able to team them though if you fancy. So if you want to use this as a sort of workstation board or something and, uh, you know, content creation or something like that, this is perfectly possible. Jumping into the BIOS here, it's uh, pretty nice, of course. This is certainly geared towards their standard styling and it's a little bit on the less user-friendly side than a lot of the other BIOSes, including people like Asus and MSI. The uh, overall usage for it was pretty decent and I think they've improved a little bit about the mouse movements, which is nice to see. But I would mention that, again, the, the options, even for stuff like overclocking, which is perfectly possible with the board, uh, you end up in a situation where you have settings that should really all be on one page, uh, but are in multiple, multiple submenus. So for example, if you just want to do a basic overclock of changing the CPU multiplier, setting your DRAM, uh, you know, timings and that, that sort of thing, even an XMP profile, and then upping the voltage for your RAM and your CPU, that is four different menus, and that's probably about 10 to 15 button presses, whereas a lot of other motherboards have a overclocking page where the majority of the settings, especially those relatively basic settings are, and you can just press with five to six key presses total, including inputting your numbers. I did have a go overclocking with this board because it looks like the VRM heatsink is pretty small. I mean, it's, it's a sort of L shape that uh, is really pretty thin on the back end, but I was actually very impressed the chip was able to get to 5 gigahertz, and because this is a stock chip and non de uh, you are looking at pretty high CPU temperatures and it ended up throttling, but it wasn't because the VRMs were throttling, they were at a pretty decent temperature, especially with relatively limited airflow, so I'm actually pretty impressed with this. So what's my thoughts on the board? Well, it's a pretty nice size, obviously, they've actually crammed in a lot to this, including the double M.2s. It overclocks pretty well, and if you can cool the CPU, you're going to have a great time with it. And while it's still annoying, you know, even from the original Z370 reviews that this is the exact same socket and that people including Asus uh, like VPs and stuff have said that the only reason that this is you know not compatible with a 7700K for example is because Intel says it isn't uh, so it, that's still quite annoying but at the same time it's still a very impressive board as I said they've crammed a lot on here and it's a pretty decent price point. Moving on to scoring for me this is going to be a 4 for 5 money. In terms of performance it's going to be a 5 and in terms of functionality I think they've done a really good job here here, but because of the BIOS, I'm going to go with a 4.5. When it comes to styling, it's not the stylish, you know, the most stylish board in the world. There's no fancy LEDs, although some people will definitely like that. So I'm going to go with a 4, and in terms of Tech BB score, it's going to be a 4.5 and a gold award. It's an impressive motherboard, and said they've 
packs a lot in here and you know if you're after an ITX board especially with something like an 86 or an 8700k I think you're gonna be pretty impressed with this one. So that's my thoughts on it I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below are you interested in picking up this board are you someone who prefers ITX or ATX chassis let me know in the comments down below. If you want to check out the board and check out pricing when and where you watch this take a look at the link in the description down below as that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can as I said see pricing and availability. You can also take a look at the Patreon and Overclockers UK affiliate links which massively help me out and support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis so feel free to take a look at those. There will be some other videos over here for you and if you're new to the channel feel free to take a look at the subscribe button as well. Otherwise that is pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.